My name is Laurel and I want to talk to you about global warming. If a meteorite was fast approaching Earth and we could deflect it, do you think we would? Even if it cost billions and billions of pounds? I guess you'd hope the answer was yes. What point would money be anyway if there was no planet? The same could be said about global warming. It's on its way. It won't be as catastrophic as a meteorite, initially. But we are already seeing super hurricanes and floods that cause billions and billions of pounds worth of damage. Katrina in New Orleans, Sandy in New York, and Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. All of them are the result of warmer seas caused by global warming. If you still don't believe it's happening, 11 out of the last 12 years have been the hottest since records began. So what are we doing about it? Well, so far relatively nothing. As early as 1962, research has proven that CO2 gas, given off by burning carbon fuels such as coal, oil and gas, was having an effect on our atmosphere. Nobody in a position to change it, things listened. For the next 50 years, research proved that our atmosphere was being heated up because of CO2. Again, nobody really listened. Or if they did, they did little about it. In 2006, Al Gore, an, Am an American politician, did a worldwide lecture on a film on global warming, for which he got the Nobel Peace Prize. Again, nobody in a position to change things really listened. Some even chose to ignore the hard facts altogether. In 1992, the first UN climate conference was held in Rio de Janeiro, where the world leaders met on global warming. They met again in 95, 97, 2001, 2005, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2011 and 2012 and 2013, and nothing was really achieved. Last year, another conference was held in Lima, where finally some reductions were agreed, but still nowhere near enough to make a significant difference to our atmosphere. Therefore, global warming will continue to rise. In fact, CO2 emissions have risen by 48% since 1992. For those in power who choose to ignore the warning signs, their reasons are very simple. Money. The big corporations are worried about their profits falling. And it's the production and transport of consumer goods around the world that burns up a huge amount of carbon fuel. The oil and gas companies who supply fuel don't want to lose their profits either. And the shareholders in these big companies want to see an increase in their profits every year. It's called global capitalism, and it's sucking the planet dry and racking the atmosphere above us. Global warming will eventually affect everyone, whoever you are, wherever you are. But unfortunately, it will affect the poor worst of all. Before Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, the government was telling people to get out any way they could. Quite a lot didn't. You know why? because they couldn't even afford the bus fare. In the poor, low-lying areas of Shanghai and Bangladesh, it's predicted that nearly 100 million people could be made homeless if the sea level rises by two metres. And that's quite possible. The warming of the atmosphere has already melted the area the size of France in Western Antarctica that had been solid ice for the last 350,000 years. And here's the stark reality. If global warming continues at the current rates, the oceans will rise. Weather will become more extreme, floods, drought, hurricanes, heat and cold. If the whole of the Arctic and Antarctic melted, the sea could rise by 200 feet. However, with all the warnings we are getting about global warming, the world's major oil companies, Shell, BG Group, BP, Exxon and Chevron are spending over 300 billion pounds in carbon fuel extraction over the next 25 years. This all sounds terrible, doesn't it? No, actually it's suicidal. But like the meteorite, we can stop it. It will cost a hell of a lot of money and even more persuasion. But what use is money if there's no habitable planet? If all the oil companies stop further exploration and extraction from, of carbon fuels from the earth, they alone could free up to over 500 billion pounds to help develop new forms of cleaner energy. 
And it's not just oil companies. Everyone needs to help the world move away from using dirty energy. Multinational companies, banks and governments. And here's the really interesting fact. The damages caused by global warming such as hurricanes, floods, drought and famine could cost a lot, lot more than changing over to cleaner energy. Hurricane Katrina alone caused £50 billion worth of damage. So what's prevented us from solving the problem? Well, it's because not enough of us have said no, no more. Everybody has to get behind this so that the heads of governments, oil companies and big businesses act as soon as possible. And you know the one thing on our side? There's more of us than them. A lot more. Our governments are aware of the problem, but they're simply not doing enough. Nowhere near enough, in fact. So we need to convince, or should I say, force them to get tougher in stopping big businesses polluting the skies for the sake of mere profit. We will all have to make sacrifices too. Fewer holidays abroad, travel more on public transport and have fewer luxury goods. But it's worth the sacrifice if we don't want our homes and lives to be destroyed and millions of other peoples around the world. So I want us all to do something. Something to be proud of. I want you all to sign a petition to send to the world governments asking them to get the ball rolling. Now. Not next year, not in 10 years time, but now. Stop burning and mining carbon fuels as soon as possible before it's too late. Because we are the future. I want all of you children and parents to sign the petition for action now against global warming and we'll deliver it to the government representatives at the United Nations Climate Change Conference this November in Paris and say, this is about helping save the planet. This is your job, the job you were voted to do. Be a government we can be proud of, not one that buried its head in the sand. The campaign's called Children Against Global Warming, or CAGW. Wouldn't it be great if we could get people from all around the world involved? Now that would be a nice kind of global warming, wouldn't it? To sign the petition, just click on the link to the Children Against Global Warming webpage. Remember, one small voice can make a difference. Be the one who helps change the planet. Thank you.